Hello students, today let's discuss about the menstrual cycle. A very important concept which you need to keep in mind, which you need to understand especially for your exams. Okay, now in this video I will be mainly discussing about the basics. From the basic all the important concepts related to menstrual cycle will be discussed in this video. And also I will be highlighting the MCQs but the part 2 of this video I will be mainly discussing 30 to 40 MCQs especially from the topic of menstrual cycle okay now in this video we will discuss the basics and all the concepts okay now menstrual cycle in a female mainly divided into a two events okay rather than I should say if I am talking about menstrual cycle in a female there are two events happening what are they ovarian events and uterine events at the same time in a female there are certain ovarian event happening and there are certain uterine events happening so what exactly are they they are okay the ovarian events are mainly divided into two phases follicular phase luteal phase even the uterine events are divided into proliferatory phase and secretory phase now guys i just want you guys to remember these events, the ovarian events and the uterine events, they are related to each other. What does it actually mean? See, if follicular phase is happening in the ovaries, if I am saying follicular phase is happening in the ovaries, at the same time proliferatory phase happening in the uterus. Okay. See, if follicular phase happening in the ovaries, then simultaneously in a uterus there will be proliferatory changes in the uterine endometrium known as proliferatory phase okay in the same way if luteal phase is happening in the ovaries then there will be secretory changes will be happening in the uterus okay now please keep these points in mind okay there are ovarian events and the uterine events in the later part of this video, I will be saying you, I will be, I will be explaining that this ovarian events which decide the uterine events. It means that this follicular phase and luteal phase which brings the changes, uterine endometrium. Okay. Now, later we will discuss but let's go with the basics. Okay. Now, let's start from the basics. Okay. Please don't worry. Okay, I will make all the concepts clear by the end of this video. Now, what I am showing you guys, this is the cross section of the ovary. This is the cross section of a ovary. In the cross section of a ovary, what can you see? Here, you can see all the different, different sized follicles. In a ovary, you can see the follicles of different, different sizes and different, different developmental stages. Okay, now, before going to start our topic, I just want you guys to know what exactly is a primordial follicle. Now guys, once concentrate, whatever I am showing you right now, which is highlighting in the green, this is a primary oocyte in a female's ovary. Okay, they are primary oocytes which are arrested in meiosis 1 diplotene stage as all of you know. Now, this primary oocyte is surrounded by a group of cells. See, these group of cells which are surrounding the primary oocyte, these cells are known as granulosa cells. Okay. Now, surrounding granulosa cells, there are one more group of cells. Okay. Around our primary follicle. Okay. Primary oocyte. Okay. Primary oocyte is surrounded by the granulosa cells. And out of the granulosa cells, we are having one more group of cells known as a theca cells okay see so these cells are known as theca cells and the orange color cells which i am highlighting these are known as granulosa cells okay and the green color cell which i have highlighted it is a primary oocyte which is arrested in meiosis 1 in diplotene stage. Please take all my points as notes, which is very, very important. Now, 
all this collectively called as the primary oocyte with the granulosa cells surrounded by the theca cells. All these collectively known as primordial follicle. Okay, so I just want you guys to know what exactly is a primordial follicle. Primary oocyte surrounded by the granulosa cells and theca cells. After knowing this, let's start from our basics. Okay, a female is there. Now she have entered into her puberty. Whenever she have entered into puberty, at puberty, what exactly is going to happen guys? At puberty, hypothalamo, a pituitary ovarian okay axis is going to get functional okay hypothalamus pituitary and ovarian axis will become functional what exactly do i mean is the hypothalamus is going to produce a hormone known as gnrh okay gnrh is going to be produced from the hypothalamus a very important point for the first time hypothalamus is producing the gnrh now this gnrh is going to act on anterior pituitary okay now this gnrh it acts on anterior pituitary now our anterior pituitary is going to produce a hormone known as fsh what is the full form of fsh it is a follicle stimulating hormone okay so follicle stimulating hormone is going to be produced from the anterior pituitary uh, clear now they will be asking you what exactly is the function of follicle stimulating hormone the name itself is there it is going to stimulate the follicles follicle stimulating hormone so this follicle stimulating hormone it will go to our primordial follicles and it stimulates the growth and development of the primordial follicles so now this fsh is going to act on the growing no it's going to act on the follicles and brings the growth and development in those follicles now especially I just want you to be more specific. This FSH acts on follicles. See in the follicle what do we have? We have a primary oocyte, granulosa cell and theca cell. Now this FSH especially acts on granulosa cells. Okay. FSH especially acts on these granulosa cells and helps in the production of estrogens. Okay, a very very important point. FSH helps in the production of estrogens. Now, what exactly these estrogens are doing? Now, once concentrate, these estrogens they are having mainly three functions. Okay, what's the first function? These estrogens will be giving a negative feedback. Okay. Okay, these estrogens will give the negative feedback for the FSH release so that no more FSH is releasing. Why, do, why, why it is important? Why? Because see, this follicle stimulating hormone, it will stimulate a many follicles, a group of follicles, but we need only one follicle to be matured and that one follicle should be ovulated so that at every month there is only one ovum releasing okay even you know even the body wants only one follicle to be matured so fsh stimulate many follicles but one follicle known as a dominant follicle that follicle is going to be matured so if you want the other follicles to undergo atresia there shouldn't be any stimulation for those follicles so this estrogen will give the negative feedback for the fsh so that there is no FSH is releasing. If no FSH is releasing other than the dominant follicles, the remaining follicles will undergo atresia. Okay, this is the concept. So the first function of the estrogens is giving negative feedback to FSH, a very, very important point. Okay, now I will just highlight, okay, so that you will keep it in mind. Okay, you will take it seriously. Now, what is the second function of this estrogens? 
Yeah, what is the second function of this estrogen? These estrogens, the main prime function, the very very important function, these estrogens will rushes towards the uterus, will go to the uterus and brings and brings proliferatory. Okay, and brings the proliferatory a changes in a uterine endo metrium okay now this estrogens will go to the uterus and brings the a proliferatory changes in the uterine endometrium guys i want you guys to remember the basics now what what, what and all we are discussing it's the first phase right in the first phase of the menstrual cycle that is before ovulation what and all the events which we are discussing right now are before ovulation now before ovulation see once concentrate here what's exactly happening in the ovaries the follicles are growing under the influence of fsh so can i say the first phase in the first phase mainly follicles are growing so i can i say it's the first phase is a follicular phase yes i can why because follicles are growing and now these follicles what exactly they are doing they are producing estrogens See, first, first, first of all, FSH is the one responsible for the development of the follicles. Now, follicles are producing the estrogens. And now, these estrogens are rushing to the uterus and bringing the proliferatory changes in the uterine endometrium. Okay? This is what I want to keep in your mind. It's the follicular phase or I can say it like the ovarian events brings the changes in the uterine endometrium okay now let's go back to our topic now once concentrate here so uh, follicles producing the estrogen now estrogen what it is doing the, uh, the number one function is giving the negative feedback the number two function is it's bringing the proliferatory changes in the uterine endometrium the number three function okay the third function of the estrogens is a super important a mind boggling for many students okay this concept is mind boggling for many students so try please try to okay uh, keep your mind here okay and what i am saying the third important function of this estrogens is a giving a positive feedback for the release of lh Okay, giving positive feedback for the release of LH. What does I actually mean? Estrogens helping in the release of LH. Yeah, it's true. Estrogens will give a positive feedback for the release of luteinizing hormone. So that this is known as, you know, so that there will be LH in the blood of a female now. So this event is known as LH surge. Okay, this event is known as LH surge. Let me write for you. This event is known as LH surge. Okay, what exactly is this LH doing in the body of a female? Now from here you have to know what exactly this LH is doing in a female in the first half of the menstrual cycle. Now this LH, before that wait, a very important MCQ is there. The estrogens are helping in the release of LH no doubt. But they will ask you what is the concentration of estrogens which are favoring the release of LH or favoring the LH search. See estrogen concentration, I am just writing it here. Estrogen concentration of a 200 picogram per ml for 48 hours. If estrogens at this level, at this concentration presents in a female body that favors the release of LH or that gives the positive feedback for the release of LH. Okay. 
estrogen is helping in the production of LH, no doubt. Now, what exactly this LH is doing? Okay. Now, this our LH, what exactly it is doing? What are the functions which were done by our LH hormone? Okay. Now, again, I am just uh, again, I am you know repeating all these events are occurring before ovulation. We are in the first half of the menstrual cycle. Okay. Now, this LH, this LH acts on granulosa cells and these granulosa cells now under the effect of LH is producing progesterone what normally granulosa cells under the effect of FSH should produce estrogens that's what we have discussed before now I am saying even the granulosa cells can produce progesterone when if they are acted upon by LH if they are acted upon by LH then granulosa cells will be producing the progesterone okay please keep that point in mind now this progesterone which is produced is before ovulation or after ovulation before ovulation now this progesterone a very important point is this progesterone which is produced in very low quantity this progesterone will favors will favors will give positive feedback a positive feedback for release of fsh okay this progesterone will give the positive feedback for the release of fsh as well as lh okay a very important concept to keep in mind even before ovulation there is progesterone and this progesterone before ovulation in small quantities will give positive feedback for the FSH so that before ovulation there is LH surge no doubt and even FSH surge is there don't worry I will show you in the graph okay before ovulation there is LH surge as well as FSH surge okay now let's come back this is um, our LH okay our LH what what and all it's doing okay when LH is acted on a theca cells okay even theca cells especially theca interna theca interna cells have the receptors for LH when these theca cells are acted upon by LH they will produce anyone andro Gens, please keep this point in mind. Theca interna cells will produce androgens when they are acted upon by LH. Now these androgens, they will go to the, again they will go to granulosa cells where the androgens will be converted into, yeah, estrogens. Okay, please, please keep this point in mind. See, granulosa cells have receptors both for LH as well as FSH. Okay, now these granulosa cells, whenever they are acted upon by LH, they are going to produce androgens and these androgens will be converted into estrogens. They will ask you what is the enzyme? What is the enzyme needed for the conversion of androgens? Two estrogens, anyone? A very important enzyme. The enzyme is aromatase. Okay. Aromatase is the enzyme helpful for the conversion of androgens to estrogen in the granulosa cells. The third important function, a very, very super important function of LHCs. See, this LH is going to act on the mature follicle which is a graferian follicle okay now concentrate now even in the graferian follicle this LH is going to act on the primary oocyte see this LH acts on the primary oocyte okay now this primary oocyte which is already arrested in meiosis 1 primary oocyte is arrested in meiosis 1 diplotene stage okay in the diplotene stage of meiosis 1 
the primary oocyte is arrested we know it okay we have already discussed it now what i want you guys to remember is whenever the lh acts on this primary oocyte meiosis 1 one, one is resumed and primary oocyte is converted to a secondary oocyte okay now in the exam they will be asking you this mcq primary oocyte will be converted to secondary oocyte with the help of which hormone it's the lh or they can ask you something like this resuming of the meiosis 1 will be done by which hormone it is the lh or they can ask you something like this conversion of primary oocyte into secondary oocyte is going to cause what is going to cause ovulation okay now our gafarian follicle will be ruptured and it is going to release the a secondary oocyte out now ovulation is because of which hormone again lh specifically speaking lh surge is going to cause the ovulation okay now all these three events you should never forget the three important functions okay let me uh, okay uh, let me repeat it okay i'm deliberately repeating so that the concept will be clear estrogen have three functions function number 1 it gives a negative feedback for the fsh the second function of the estrogen is bringing the proliferatory changes in the uterine endometrium the third function of the estrogens is helping in the production of lh giving positive feedback for the lh now come what exactly lh is doing lh acts on the granulosa cells and makes the granulosa cells to produce progesterone and this progesterone will give before ovulation this progesterone will give a positive feedback for the release of fsh okay and even lh the second function of this lh is lh will be acting on the theca cells once concentrate lh is acting on the theca cells especially theca interna cells so that these theca interna cells are producing the androgens these androgens they will go into the granulosa cells where they get aromatized to the estrogens what is the third function of lh guys this lh is going to act on the primary oocyte which was arrested in the meiosis 1 now whenever this lh acts on this primary oocyte the primary oocyte is going to convert into the secondary oocyte so that ovulation happens okay now ovulation is happened so first part of the menstrual cycle is completed first part of menstrual cycle completed with the ovulation 